You have 30 seconds. 30 Come seconds, on, Pablo. Go, go, go. go. <laughs> Damn. Hey, grito, bro. Nah, nah, nah. Here we get the baby, bro. <laughs> We're back. What's up, guys? Oh, it's, we got the big boys in here today. Come on. We man. got my boy Caesar. Yeah. You remember from the other episode? Yeah. Papa for the number two episode, first guest we had. Yeah. And our brand new guest. And the one that's gonna change the whole game, Mr. What? Also. Woo! Hey, Infrit. Also gonna finish off a shot of certain um, uh. liquids. There it is. Drinking water. Uh, today makes it 176 days sober, so we're going to keep it going. So They're going to be hey, drinking, but there it is. Hey. I'll, be, I'll be drinking water, so I guess I'll take a shot. Yeah, uh, take I a mean, shot of water. Of water. So for everybody out there knows, we're, we're what do you want? What do you want? Uh, what, what do you got? <laughs> we got nice white claws. <laughs> Let's take a white claw. Okay. 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 Yeah, we got this. <laughs> Casamigos. What do you want? Uh, let me. What are you drinking? Apple juice. <laughs> Eradura, this is a good one. This is a good one. This is a good one. Cool. Damn, a hundred, a hundred what? One hundred and seventy-six days, bro. Shit. You know the thing about it? It went by fast. I didn't even think I was gonna hit a hundred days. To be honest. Dang. Before hundred days, I think the longest I was sober was about, I think thirty-five days, bro. Before I relapsed again. Damn. And I relapsed twice. And so, but this is the we'll, last we'll, time. We'll, 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 we'll get into oh, that. We'll, we'll get, get into how that happened, but with that. Cheers. Brothers, cheers, boom, boom. Cheers, 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 cheers. He cheers. didn't change it, it's water. Water. 48 hours. Hell yeah. Let's get right into it. So we have everybody here, one way or another, we're all connected. But how'd you connect with either of these two guys right here? Oh, it's fine. So, well, you want to start? Start with Pac. Go ahead, Pac. Who'd you, who'd you meet first? I met, I met Pac first. Yeah, I met Pac. Know. How'd you meet this? This, the man, the myth, the legend right here. Man, it goes way, about two years now? About almost three, three, three. Almost three years, huh? Um, and so it was a grand opening at Hidden Strength Gym, where he trains at now. Hidden Strength? 2.0, sorry, 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was at the first one. I know yeah, I was at the first, the first one. You were there before me. So yeah. I was there, and I was just chilling, and then I saw this strong motherfucker. Who's this guy right here, you know? He's always known for deadlifting and then shrugging at the same time. So I'm like, oh, who's this guy right here? So I met him. For real? <laughs> and then how I met this guy right here, he posted a story of getting a massage. Yeah. I'm like, who's that bear? He looks like a bear. He, but he looked like Daddy Yankee with the curls before, you know? So I'm like, I'm like, but I needed to get work done because my body was all fucked up from powerlifting. So he right. gave me his IG, hit him up, and yeah. we met. And yeah, we, man, when we, we met, we clicked right off the bat. Like, it was almost like, it was, it was, it was, it was too crazy how, how our lives were so similar. You know, the things that we were going through, yeah. you know, he shared his stuff with me. I didn't share it with him, but I heard him and I'm yeah, like, yeah. man, I just saw myself and it's so crazy. It's so crazy how God puts you in people's paths, like right? position on the same, yeah. on the same, on the same journey. Well, that's how I met Caesar because I seen this who post this guy, like, <laughs> I was like, dude, I'm at the point you know, I can barely walk. My back is like <laughs> fucked up. I was like, hey, funny story, I, bro. I do it. First day I saw him, I hit him up when I am here. But it took me a while to get inside because I was cramping up on my hamstring. As soon as I got out of the car, I, I was on my hood like, shit, I'm getting cramped on my hamstring. So I, could, I couldn't walk into the office. So it took me about like 20 minutes to get into his office. I'll be there, I'll be the there right now. Yo, right, dang. Yeah, that's crazy. So I was like, so <laughs> with, we got that background. Yep. That is said and done. Yeah. What do you do? What? How old are you first and foremost? I'm 29. Just turned 29, March 4th. Shut I think I'm the birthday, youngest one. Happy birthday. Oh, you're the youngest one, right? Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's him. Oh, yeah. then I'm 24. Him, him, me, and then you. Oh, oh shit. I'm 25. All right. I'm 20, 23. So, Grandpa. Oh, yeah. Rob. Right. Right. Oh. Last year in the 20s. Damn. So, yeah. what I do, while well, you guys know I power lift, I do that. And a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a correction officer. So, I work in a state prison. So, I have, it's crazy I have like, a lot of different backgrounds to me, you know? So, when I tell people, it's like, how the fuck are you a correction officer and you do what you do outside? You know? Yeah. They don't match up. It's like, cause yeah, yeah. I, I know I just learned how to fucking separate the two because I have a job to do, so I got to be a certain way in here. But then when I come out, yep. I respect everybody as a human so being you, and I love human beings. You, know? you, you can be like a 
total asshole here, but when you come over here, you're just... You got to, you know what I mean? Big ass teddy bear. You got to adapt. Oh, yeah. I think in that environment, you have to adapt, you know? You, you have, have to. become a different individual. Yeah, especially in your position, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you're like... You know what I mean? You you gotta be you gotta be tough on these guys. Yeah. You know you, you can't know be how soft to on them. Right. Was, that, to. was that an issue for you? Like being a correction officer and then coming home and being you, you sort of say. Well, when I was drinking, when I I, I just I just thought I just I was a whole different person. When I was drinking because I think the only days I wouldn't get drunk would be on my double shifts. But even then, after my double shifts, I would go straight to the fucking liquor store and buy four tall, tall cans or four of those 40, the Bud Ice 40s. Yeah. yeah. And I would chug them real quick because I had to be back in like five hours to work. How long uh, How long have you been a correctional officer? About five, six years. And how long have you powerlifted? Two years. Two years. Two years. When did you start powerlifting? I think I was new when I met him. That's, I was a powerlifter, but I hadn't competed yet, but I was training to compete. So I started powerlifting. Shout out to my boy Claudio. Uh, he knows Claudio. Yeah, uh, that's my guy. He met Claudio. Yeah. Um, so it all started at LA Fitness, man. So damn, <laughs> I was just there because I'm like, hey, well, shit, I want to lose weight, you know? Like I just went to LA Fitness. I was doing. I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was just doing little machines. Figuring yeah, figuring, out, just yeah. figuring out. Just like, okay, I guess I just gotta lift weights and I'll get strong, you know? I think we all started at public gyms, to be honest. Oh with yeah. You. I started at, at so, uh, twenty. I started. At, I started at twenty four. I started at 20. I started at 20. Well, I started at Planet Fitness. Oh, what is that, bro? Oh. Uh, no disrespect. Uh, no disrespect. <laughs> damn. Bagel so, Friday, dog. Bagel Friday. Nah, so you get <laughs> Bagel Friday. So if you go to the Monday mornings, yeah. you get bun. Damn. Like, they bring they bread, pizza. bro. Nah, that's in the afternoon. Oh, damn. But I wasn't there. I wasn't there. Yes. But, but so I, I, did, I put this, at that point, I was already, like, from going to high school sports, Caught like first year of college, still staying active. And then when I started working at T-Mobile, this was when I was like 19, almost hitting 20, I completely stopped physical activity. And every, we should all know, once you graduate high school, not doing any physical, like, physical activity, your weight just. Oh, yeah. So I went from two, I would say max 215, to a nasty 260. I don't have no pictures during that time. You look solid, bro. That was then. But that was no activity. And so that's why I hit Planet Fitness because I told myself, all right, well, these 24-hour fitness, LA fitness, you pay 30, 40 bucks. I was like, I don't think I'm that committed yet. So let me start somewhere, which is like 20 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. If I make a year there, I'll make the move. I completed the year. I I learned a lot more about myself, the grind. Hit 24-hour. And then that was it. Exploded from there. Exploded. Well, I was here at West Covina, and then I went to Wana. I met the Wana boys over there. Uh, and it was just that, that how you met him, it was just that bond where people, certain individuals, Paul, Bishop, Ari, uh, my boy E-Rock, uh, my boy John, we just all got together, bro. And it was just, well, let me, ha- I, w- I didn't know how to lift, but yeah. I was lifting strong. Yeah. They're like, before you break your back let me oh yeah it's crazy you know i thought lifting weights was just lifting weights until like i got to actual power lifting i'm like oh shit there's a technique to everything right. i'm like oh shit oh you're always supposed to squat that way what's depth i didn't know what depth was you know yeah. i was quarter squatting you know and then deadlifting i was pulling on my back bench and i was you know so it was like power lifting is just more than just lifting weights and you find different ways to do things yeah. so what i think the important thing important question that for the people that follow you and the viewers that we've been getting how did you go from drinking every day after work or after your shift to now being completely sober for the last like 160 days like how did that happen what was what was it what was so Man. what happened bro like what happened um, I almost died <laughs> uh, my pancreas almost bursted it was back in October. Uh, it was October 14th is when uh, I checked into the hospital. But before that, everything just led up to that day. But just basically, uh, my... So throughout the, the, the week, I, the last week I saw him is when I felt everything. I was feeling pain. I was feeling dehydrated. I felt I was going to pass out at the gym. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. I knew that my diabetes came back because yeah. I was always thirsty and I was pissing like every like five minutes. I was pissing. I'm like, oh shit, well, my diabetes is back. But because I knew I was drinking every day yeah. i was drinking almost a 30 pack a day a day so it's like so october 14th i had a pain in the morning it started in my kidney and it shot straight to the front so i came back from the gym 
And I was like, hey, I can't tolerate this shit. I gotta go. That's why I told my my mom, my brother, hey, I'm gonna go to urgent care. And I hate going to the doctors. I avoid the doctors for any reason. So I'm like, hey, I gotta go because I'm in pain. So I get there and I just remember just waiting and waiting. And they finally call me and they hey, piss, piss in the cup. I piss in the cup. They check my sugar. My sugar level was at 600. So, Jesus. and the doctor's like, how the fuck are you functioning right now? I was like, you could get, it might be ketoacidosis where you're basically a coma. So they check everything. And then the main doctor came and was like, hey, you need to go to the emergency room right now. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, I just can't get checked. Like, what the fuck is going on? We don't know what's wrong. It could be your kidneys. Something's happening. I'm like, oh, well, I'll drive myself. So before I, so before I went to the hospital, I'm like, let me stop at a liquor store by a, I actually bought a Gatorade. So I bought a Gatorade and went to my house, got my water because I knew I was going to fucking be thirsty just waiting. But as soon as I got to the hospital, they were, they were expecting me. Oh, shit. So they, they took me right into the, they took me right to the, the room and they admitted me. And then the doctor, they drew my blood. They took the urine. like, you're lucky to be here. Yeah. It was like, like, your pancreas is about to burst. You have early stages of kidney failure. And if you would have waited a couple more days, you would have set, sepsis. That's like a whole blood infection. Yeah, I know someone that happened. Yeah, it, it, you, it's like, it, it literally, like, it's almost like something pops in you. Yeah. And that, whatever that leaks, that's like poison in your body. And it just kills you. So, yeah. so I just... I knew I knew what I was doing to myself, but I didn't care because everything was what I was going through. But I just, you know, those. The first of the doctor told me, "Hey, you ain't gonna call, you ain't gonna come out of the hospital for at least 20, 30 days." Yeah. And he's like, "That's even if you make it, you know." Like I'm like, "What the fuck? How can I be in here for thirty days? Twenty days? I can't be that fucked up, you know?" Yeah. And fucking to be alive, like yeah. they're expecting you to maybe yeah. not even make it out. And I was chilling, like I was Facetiming people. I'm like, "Hey, I'm like." I'm like, but it's, I, I was taking it as a joke, you know? Yeah. So then I think the next overnight, when I, because my, my mom took me, so as soon as she left, and they took me up to the room, and they, they fucking put five IV bags on me. And I'm like, damn, I'm like, why so much? And I yeah. think just sitting there and just like, why the fuck, am, what am I doing? You yeah. know, like, I lost about 200 pounds on my bench, my, my squat, my deadlift, just because I got sick. Yeah. And my diabetes, my diabetes came back hard, and I think from that that moment on, I'm like, I gotta stop drinking. Was yeah. it? Was it like certain people you were hanging out with? It, was it just life happening? Life like? happening. Um. Well, here, here we're gonna get a little, a little personal here, but you know, I do it. So, I was in love with this uh, girl. I'm not gonna say her name, but um, we were together for about ten years. Yeah. Um. So it all started, you know, I, she was my queen. I loved her. She was like my first female I fell in love with. I was really attached. I never cheated on her, like, in the beginning. You know, in the beginning, I was just all about her. Unfortunately, I just remember she was pregnant the first time. Well, she had a daughter already when we met, right? Mm -hmm. So we fucking, um, anyways, well, I went on a cruise. I forgot where I went, but that's when she had told me she was pregnant. And I'm like, well, cool, you know? Yeah. Well, we got married. We were married. We got married. Oh, yeah. 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 But we did support, but. So we went on a cruise, told me she was pregnant, and then the night when I came back from the cruise, she ignored me the first day. I'm like, why is she ignoring me? Mm -hmm. So she hit me up, the, I think the day after, she was like, oh, hey, I had a miscarriage. And I'm like, all right, well, I mean, I don't know how to take it, because I've never had I've an experience, that. you know? So yeah, I was yeah. like, okay. So anyways, I kept seeing her. See, she wouldn't see me as much, so it was kind of awkward. But then, as time went on, I finally saw her and I finally just noticed the bump. She was still pregnant. Oh. You know, so she was she was going to her own little thing and um anyway, so one day she just told me like, hey, straight up it's not yours. Oof. I'm pregnant by the first baby daddy, you know? Yeah. You know, and that one, you know, it was just that that first time I was hurt, I was I was devastated. The whole world and, came down. And that's when I think my, that's when I really became an alcoholic. I think that's when I wrapped up my drinking because I would want to get mad. I, basically, I used alcohol as a fucking, you know, escape. an escape so I could talk to girls, have the confidence, hey, well, let me go talk to you. You did this to me. Why the fuck am I going to care who I talk to? You yeah. Know? And, you know, I don't know why I stood. Like, I, I went back to her on my own because I loved her. I'm like, you know what? Maybe she'll change, you know? Let's try it out again. So, but it didn't, you know, things kept happening. She, she was going between me and him. And so it was like... This is when I became a correction officer, and I started at Pelican Bay. It's about 16 hours north, so I went up north. Damn. Working-wise, it was probably the best experience I have, but that was probably one of the darkest times because I was living alone. So my, I was literally going to work drunk, 
going just drinking, drinking, drinking. I remember just stacking my garage were always stacked with boxes of beer and alcohol, yeah. and bottles. So I remember my, my parents were like, "Hey, we're gonna go see you." I'm like, "Oh shit! Well, I need to gather all these boxes and throw bottles away. and go yeah, sell them," you know. Yeah. So by the time yeah. they came, everything was clean. No one knew. Damn. I became a functional drunk. I guess you could say that, you know. So, anyways, I moved back. I got my transfer down to San Diego. You know, things were cool. Me and her reconnected. Um, we were starting off, you know, I, it, it seemed to me like, okay, well, this is going to be serious. Like, she's changed, you know, like, this has happened a year, two years, two years ago. She, was, she, she told me she was pregnant again. It was two years ago. She was, hey, the baby's yours. Like, like she was, I was excited. I'm like, fuck yes, I want to be a dad. Because I was always wanted to be a father. So I was ready to be, I'm ready to be a father. Yeah. So the whole pregnancy, I was, I thought I was a father. But the whole back of my mind, I always knew, hey, I need a DNA test because of what happened. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, she was, she always got a little defensive when I asked for one. But the, the baby was born. She didn't talk to me for that first week. So I was Ooh. kind of awkward. I'm like, oh, I wasn't even there for the birth or yeah. I didn't sign anything. So I, kind of, I thought that was kind of weird. But, you know, I gave her the benefit of a doubt again. But I was, a, I was a drunk, so I was really, like, thinking... Um. So, she finally hit me up. She's like, "Oh, hey, he's yours. He's yours. Don't worry about anything." And she, yeah, he looks like you. So for f- until the baby was five months, I was with him, Carrie, like holding him. I was seeing him, and again, all of, it was September. She stopped talking. We had a little, we had a little, you know, we had a little fight, and then she's yeah. like, "Hey, you know, you know, the baby's not yours. It's totally it's the DNA test. Like he's not yours. Blah blah blah." So oh. I found out. Oh, okay, so he's not mine. So she did it twice, she and that's when I. Just, I did. That was a downfall. That was a downfall, and you know I've always battled with depression, just because you know I've ne- I never knew who I was. I always, excuse me, um, I was always the kind of dudes like I need to do things to fit in. Yeah. I always wanted to be the popular kid. I always wanted to hang out with the popular crew. So it was like I did stupid shit just to be accepted. I wanted acceptance from everybody, but I never wanted to accept myself. Did you think that started the like the acceptance part started like at a young age? Because oh, I so I say it because like since high school, since elementary, I always thought I was like, all right, if I hang out with the cool kids and I do stupid shit, I'm cool and I'm verified. I'm you know I'm the one everybody wants to be around with. Yeah. Soon to be enough. Like getting in high school, starting to realize a lot more. It's like I'm with the athletes. I'm taking uh, advanced classes. Like these are the dudes that I want to be around with mm-hmm. and now I've, I've who was it I think with the episode with my boy Dylan we're talking about it like now that you're older you graduated you're classify yourself as a man like some people still don't want to take responsibility well, of course not don't want to take what life is coming and they become the victim and they find out like well because this happened I can't do this and now nah, life sucks it's like and I and you know what I it really comes down to people want to find peace immediately. And, you know, and they turn to shit like alcohol or drugs or they start becoming whole, like a whole fucking yeah. different people because people want to find peace immediately. And a lot of people don't want to go to war with themselves. And, you know, like David Goggins said, the only way you're going to find peace with yourself is if you go to war with yourself. Right. Yeah. And so I guess. A lot of people just want to find peace. They think as soon as like they have a heartbreak or they go through something, oh, things are gonna get better like that. Yeah. It's not. You're gonna. So you think that's like a guy thing that we don't take on the heartbreaks, absolutely, or that we say, ah, oh, that shit didn't hurt me. Fuck that. I can go on to the next. It's a stereotype. But when you get home, you're just fucking out chillando. You're crying. Oh, you want? Yeah. That's why I was in my room every fucking night. Like, even, like the shit I was doing to be accepted by people, I would go home and like, how? Why the fuck did I do cocaine? Why did I do PCP? Like, why the fuck am I giving people money just to be accepted? Like, I would literally, my like, before I had this job and my mom was giving me money to help me, right? But I would give it to the homies so they could, like, oh, well, he's taking care of me, you know? They but care I, about me. Yeah, so I was doing stupid shit just to be accepted and be part of the cool crew. And, you know, but, you know, men's mental health is is not recognizable enough, you know? Nah. Uh, I guess, well, we, we're all, we are from, like, a generation where, like, whether it's a stepdad, a dad, or a dad figure, they tell us, or people tell us, hey, you're a man. Don't fucking cry. Man the fuck up. Uh, and, you know, and that's, uh, and a lot of people don't realize is, we're fucking hurting too, you know? And if and we're in a relationship, it, it, I think it's a, more overwhelming for us because we got to make sure our significant other is good, but we're hurting too. So it's like, 
how the fuck are we gonna try to help them when we can't fucking help ourselves and right. I, well I think it's like a you see, Paco, Paco's ready for Paco, this. Go ahead, Paco. Nah, Let's go talk, ahead, bro. man. Go ahead. Talk go about ahead. that yeah, heartbreak. Yeah, yeah. Talk about, like, what, you know, the reason I say it is how, how you're saying right now. Like, as a generation, when we grow up, it's like, no yores, boys don't cry, da 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 yeah. And the podcast that I, I listen to, uh, I Am Athlete, they're talking about when you have a daughter, you always want to acariciado, you want to love them. Like, ah, oh, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But when you have a son, like, you tell him, don't cry. Man, man, and it's just like to a girl, to your girl, you're like, nah, it's okay, cry, let it out. Right, right. But for a guy, he's like, nah, hold that shit in, be a man, be tough. Let's go, Pop. I mean, basically, what you're saying, bro, it's true. Like, you know, we do live in a generation where, like, we all get stereotyped. Like, uh, you know, you, you, you don't cry, like, be a man, like, handle that shit on your own. Like, you know, I think most of us don't really understand that there's people out there, like, well, including myself, that. You know, we post a lot of shit to make ourselves seem happy, really. Like, and deep inside, we know we're really not. Yeah, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows that we're fighting our demons. Oh, and, of course. And, you know, the reason why we do that is because of pride, you know? Oh, pride, too. And fucking, we just don't want to show our emotions. Well, you don't want to get looked down upon right. and right. be classified as a... Oh, you're, you know, you're a soft little boy. Yo. Yeah. How, how can you be a you're, man? You're a female dog. Like, <laughs> why are you doing... You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you doing that? But it's just like, I. this is a reason why I started this... This podcast, this channel was because I went through my own shit and how you said I had to go to war with myself because for the longest time, bro, it was like I'm posting, I'm here, I'm here, I'm having fun. But there was still a point where it was just like I am crying and I don't even know why I'm crying anymore. I just I need to feel okay. And it was just like, all right, well, let's let's how you say let's go to war. You got to. And like he and going back to what he said. There's so many influencers out there now, motivators, who post quotes, who hide behind a fucking quote. Hey, fuck the quote. Let's see your story. Yeah. Why don't you post what you're going through? Right. We have so many false idols, I guess you could say. Yeah. It's like, how can you influence? Like, okay, a lot of people don't know this, right? So uh, after my hospital thing, I, you know, I want to go get help. All right, hey, you know, let me try this help thing. I got kicked out of therapy, but check it out why I got kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was there talking, I was talking to the guy, I was talking to the doctor. And I, and you know, I, I'm like, hey, doc, I would, all due respect, like, you're telling me the same shit you're telling your clients before and after me. You don't know my story. Yeah. How do you know me? How, if you don't know me, how can you help me? Yeah. And he just told me to leave his office. And I'm like, okay. Oh, that's all you got to say. Okay. And I knew from that point forward, no one's fucking coming to help me. No one's fucking understands me. Yeah. I gotta do this shit on my own and I think a lot of people make the mistake of wanting somebody to have their hand out a lot of people are waiting for somebody to come fucking rescue them well it's, they're waiting for it but still don't want it exactly so they're like I'm gonna tell Caesar, like Caesar, bro I need your help right. and then when you come help me I'm gonna turn around and be like ah that shit was bullshit I mean I didn't want your help in the yeah. first place and that's just like to accept your own flaw and you I do believe you have true homies and you have true friends right that care about you and your well-being like my brothers like you now like them it's just you can count on people without them asking for anything in return yeah. you, have, you know yeah, what I'm saying yeah. like yeah. I think that's that's well we'll get into that like the friendships because there's certain friendships that you know are bad for you and as much as you want to oh, like, absolutely who you hang around with dictates what and who you're gonna be that's what it comes down to if yes. you're going to be with a group of people who want to drink, you're going to fucking drink every weekend. Mm-hmm. Think about it. We all have friends. Yeah. Hey, let's go to a bar. Let's go to a happy hour. Let's go to a brewery. Yeah. Fuck yeah, let's go. Let's go. Oh, hey, let's go. Let's go see. You guys know who Eric Thomas is? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. Let's, let's go see them talk. Let's yeah. go to a seminar. Nah, you know what? Nah, I can't. That's I got plans. Nah, so yeah. when you try to do something positive, they don't make time. But as soon as you're trying to get drunk and fucking do something negative... Oh, they're there. I'm going to give you guys a perfect example. Jump in. Jump in. Right, look, bro. So, I go to the beach every Sunday morning. I right? see. Yeah, you yeah. see it, right? Y'all yeah. see it. So, it's, it, that's literally my time to recollect from my week. Mind you, I didn't do this for a while, right? Because I couldn't. I just couldn't because of the yeah. situation I was in. But now that I've done it again, I've every time I do it, it's almost like this bar that I had before, right? Full of, like, just peace. And, and just feeling fulfilled within myself and feeling recharged. Because that's how I look at it. When yeah. I go, it's like me charging myself back up, like plugging myself back in, you know, in the charger or whatever. So I tell people all the time, 
Paco, no, nah, I'm saying, I'm not saying Paco, yeah, yeah. that's Paco, but let's say, oh, Paco, hey, bro, I'm going Sunday morning. I go like at five, six in the morning. Are you done to go? Yeah, 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 let's go. Bro. He won't, he won't go. He won't either, he won't call me or he won't pull up. Same with Luis and a lot of people, right? Yeah, right. Again, going back to this, right, going back to the whole, oh, but if I were to be like, hey, bro, let's go Friday night, let's go to the restaurant or let's go to the club or let's yeah. go out, yeah. he's there, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. They'll do that, but they won't do like like like, like uh, also saying like the, like the positive stuff, which is things that are gonna make you a better person rather rather than things that are gonna distract you from what the demons you're fighting. Well, you take it back to like what you just said earlier. Like you worry us as men, you worry about others first. But I been I literally been saying it for especially for the people ma- battling that mental like how that mental part is you worry about all these other people, your friends, your sisters, your brothers, your parents, but how can you take care of them if you're not even okay yourself? And it's just like how, you know, you bring, I follow certain influencers uh, like Eric Thomas because of the message that he says. And I right away just, all right, how do I tie it into my life? All right, this is what it is. This is what I'm doing. Let's go get it. This is what I got to do. And it's, exactly. It's true, man. Um, what I, I I mean, I got this from Nip, which is basically what he said in an interview, and I'm pretty sure he got it from somewhere else, and I can't quote that, but basically is, for a long time, this goes for me personally, I was at, at war with myself, and what that means is, you know, I was like, you know, like, and I would never work out, right, I would always put work in front of me, and family I used to have, right, and just a bunch of other stuff that was important, that should be important too. Me, right? Yeah. So that's be, me being at war with myself. Oh. Right? For 20 minutes? Damn. Yeah. Now you're good. We're good. still good. Okay, okay, we're we're good. 20 minutes in. That's just how the conversation is going, bro. But back to what you're saying. Yeah. So for a long time, I was at war with myself and at peace with the world. And what that means is I made everybody else happy besides myself. Right? But as soon as I flipped, as soon as I flipped the switch and I started... I started being at peace with myself, right? Doing the things I need to for myself. I became at war with the world. Everybody started like, like for whatever reason, like everybody thinks I'm the bad guy. You want a shot, bro? Yeah, yeah. Where are you? you want water? Nah. Oh, okay. Uh, let me get the the ter- 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 It's Terramana, ter- bro. Ter- 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 God, ter- 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 yeah, dude. Shout out, shout out the Rock. You feel me? <laughs> You ain't gonna get sponsored, homie. Relax. But what if I'm trying to? Oh, bro, <laughs> bro. We need that. Hey, but we going back, to yeah. going plus azul. Ooh. But going back to what you were saying, though. Yeah, that, that's really what it is, bro. I, I, I'm, I'll be guilty. Of it. I, I, man, I care about how people looked at me, you know. And back to. Uh, Oh, nah, you got another one? Oh, hey, bro, hold on. Oh, dang, Pop. Oh, Pop, we about to make him cry today, baby. Look, look. Crazy, bro. <laughs> There's some, some chanting that I ever said this. Oh, Luis, you crazy, bro. Yeah, it's not me. Paco came in firing. That's good. Oh, my toast, my boys. Toast. 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 I'm not drinking. Nah, I'm my hands are up. He's still good. Drink a shot of water. Did you drink your water? Ooh. Yeah, but going back to what you were saying, I care how people looked at me. And you care you or you cared? I cared. Ooh. I don't give a fuck what you think about me now. Ooh. You get the fuck out of here. You don't like me. I didn't fucking ask Ooh. you, you know? Damn. But before, Damn. but you know what? Salute. When I first started doing motivational videos, right? I was drunk, so I was a hypocrite, you know, but no one knew that. Yeah. But so that's why I stopped doing videos because I'm like, well, what the fuck? Why? How am I preaching this shit? Self reflection. And I'm fucking an alcoholic. Ooh. And a lot of people don't want to fucking take responsibility for it. You see a lot of motherfuckers on IG right now who are fucking dealing with shit and preaching shit. Yeah. And that's why I, I'll make motivational videos in there, but I got to make sure I'm good and I'm ready. Because how am I going to preach the word if I'm not good? Yeah. And like I said, I, was, I always care what people said about me, what they liked. I was always careful what I posted. I'm I'm so at peace with myself. I think it's the best place I've ever been in my life. Same man. And Same you know, man. and if you don't like me, you don't like what I do. You can simply go follow me. I don't care who <laughs> fucking likes me or not. You know, it's that I, simple. I do it for myself at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. But if I could change lives on the way there, on the way to my journey, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I did this journey for myself and to, to reach out for people. That's right. So how'd you get there? You gotta go through the pain. You gotta hit rock bottom. And you. Go ahead, go ahead. I mean, I was, I was gonna add on to it. Like, one thing about um, working on yourselves, bro, like you're saying, like, you know, you don't give a fuck about who's there. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is 
that there's a lot of fake ass people too who, who oh, can to be there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, like, and you can you can automatically tell. Like they won't be there when you're going down. That's, that's, the hard, shit. that's the hardest part. Yeah, that's why I hate. That's why I hate our generation nowadays. It's all, it's all fake preach. It's all clout. It's, like, it's all clout. It's all that's what it comes. That's why I'm just like, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I've like, I, I've even told Louis like, bro. I, there's so many times I want to disconnect from social media because it's all fake. It's all fake. Like, that's why yeah. I stopped posting a lot because I was just like, bro. Like, I, I believe that I if you fake. if you're having to add on to that, bro. Um, I believe if you have social media, it should be for marketing purposes only. Well, that's what it is now. You know, because at the end of the day, right now, bro, it's all about perception. Oh, is exactly. It, oh, hell yeah. It's perception, bro, because in reality, like also was saying earlier, people share what they want you to see, right? Not what you want. Right. And then usually it's a good, right? It's right. usually when they're up. Who wants to see you breaking down? Who wants to see it? Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, that that's like what what you guys are saying. And I'm you have told me before, and I, in the in back of my head, I'm like, all right, if I disconnect, I'm doing an injustice, not to myself, but to the people that, you know, for so far have been watching and following. But it, it, it goes back to how you're saying, right. being a hypocrite and posting positive stuff and not doing positive stuff. Right. Like what you've been doing, Caesar, about posting about the sky and, and praise to God and everybody. I I live by it because for the, since I went to war with myself and now, if I really fell to that route and I would have gave up, I can't I can't say I love life. Right. Because now, like, I've always looked at something, the downfall of a lot of things, and be like, well, fuck, this is happening, I'm not happy, da, da, da. but I switched it, and now it's just like, I have this, I'm lucky, you know what I'm saying, like, I am blessed that I have this, like, I go back to a certain event that happened, I believe it was like last year or two years ago, um, one of the dudes I met at work, and he's an African American dude named Ray, and every time I see him, like, don't mind him. He works in an oil company, bro. Like, hot as fuck. And every time I see him, hey, brother. And, bro, I'm clean. That's the first job I get to. I just hug him. Oh, yeah. And it was, uh, my dad was in the hospital once. Right. And at, I was trying to process it. And I got there. And he always asked for my dad. He was like, hey, man, how's your dad? Him, I only see him for an hour. Just I started crying. I was like, look, man, like it's not cool. That same dude, man. I get a I went to that same job site, he wasn't there. He was like, Hey, have you talked to his wife? And I was like, No, like, what's up? He was like, Hey, well, he had a he had a heart attack. Oh, oh shit. And I was man. like, What? He was like, Yeah, I was like, All right. I get home and I tell my mom, I was like, Hey, well, cause she knows him. I always talk about him and I was like, Hey, like he had a stroke. I just bawled. Well, and I had practice that day. I want to go coach the girls. After that, I drove all the way to Compton. I want to go see him. Tom, like, half of his body, like, now he's a lot better, but half of his body was like, no. When I see him, he's like, hey, brother, how I'm you doing, happy. man? He was like, I'm blessed. I'm here. Right. Mind you, this guy already had a stroke, like, a couple months before, and he drove all the way home, and he said, look, doc, I don't care what you say. I got to go see my daughter. That lives, I forgot what what state. I'll be back, and when I come back, I'll come see you again. <sighs> Walking, this dude literally, you would say, like, die twice. It's a beautiful soul, and he and and it doesn't change. He was there, pure, like, pure. we were had the baby shower, we're all there, and then I see him, and, and I walked him, like, bro, you're, you're mm, mm-hmm. you help me spiritually. That no matter what happens in this world, as long as you wake up, you got an opportunity to do better. Why not be better? You gotta be better. And see, people like that live forever, bro. <sighs> and they, and not just in this world, bro, but in your in your heart, man. Exactly. And that's I think that's why I I love what we're doing now and what this is bringing because these stories will live forever. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. people, there's a lot of people now in our generation right. who have that mentality: live fast, live young. Fuck that. You know, it's like at the end of the day, rain we're all forever. Rain forever. Rain forever. That's right, bro. But we're all writing a book. Right. We all have a book to us. Oof. We all close the chapter when we go through shit. Yeah. At the end of the day, people don't realize. At the end of the day, how's your book going to look like? And how's it going to impact people? Right. Yeah. It, it, when somebody reads your book, is it going to save their life? Or are they going to be like, well, fuck. Or is somebody going to take their own life because you did it? Right. So at the end of the day, you know, I like to say a lot of people... 
want to get rid of their demons. <laughs> and that's not the fucking case. Those motherfuckers are always going to be there. Right. And I like to say, you got to be down with the demons. You got to be down with them because they're never going to go away. Yeah. I still, you know, I thank God I don't crave alcohol. But you, I get that little sense. I'm like, hey, maybe just one. There'll be some days I'll be like, hey, just one, have one beer. Man, fuck that. I'm, I, I fight it. You got to be your demon's boss, right. you know? You and there's going to be times where those demons are going to fucking test you, but you got to fucking dance with them and show them who the fuck you really are. Yeah. And I think a lot of people make the mistake of trying to slay them, put them away, put them asleep forever. Nah, man. You got to fucking live life, go through that fucking hardship battle every day because they, they're they never going to go away. Right. What does it say? Stop like for something that. or fall for anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what Fine. it is. If you if, down for your demons. Ooh. Be down with the demons. I'm gonna get that tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take let's Fucking take our, our shit, let's we'll take our break. We'll be right back. We're back. Back back. Part, part, two. Two. part two. Part two. Part two. Uh, Papa started crying a little while ago, so we had to take a quick we'll take break. break. Take but uh, break. let's t- let's talk about it. Your support, the people that actually hey, support you. Before we go into this, I just want to say shout out to my gym family from Girl Strong Fitness Center, Ruben, Alexis, Vince. All you guys, Claudio, Claudio love Claudio. you guys. You guys are the reason why I'm here, uh, why I stay sober. I just love you guys Let's for talk being. about that. With my guys? Yeah, support, yeah. Talk oh, about man. Me, why, so you just said the other reason why you stay sober. Why is that? That's your support. They hold me accountable. Yeah. They hold me accountable. I mean, they drink, but you know, they check me. If I'm out of the wrong, they're like my, they're, I'm like the oldest, one of the oldest. Besides Claudio, I think Claudio, well, you're 50, right, Claudio? I'm just kidding, bro. You're only 38. <laughs> but, but, um, hey, my boy looking good, though. Nah, he's looking good. He's Bodybuilder. 38 and you're 21. So, no, no, just accountability. You know, yeah. um, it's funny because when, when I was at Ali Fitness, I always saw dudes with the Liberated Empire shirt. I'm like, who the fuck is this Liberated Empire? Like, it's all over Ali Fitness. Yeah. Disrespect, bro. I don't know. No, I don't know who that is. Oh, what's Ruben? Ruben's man. Ruben's man. So I, I saw, I, I saw the Ali Fitness in Downey. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? You know, everybody has liberated. I'm like, I don't, have, I don't have a shirt. Where can I get one? You know? Yeah, yeah. So Ruben shows up. I didn't know Ruben at this time. Ruben shows up with his uh, his boy Ricardo. It was Alexis and Vince. They all showed up in the crew, wearing liberated. I'm like, oh, these motherfuckers, you know? Who the fuck are these guys, you know? Yeah. So, when every time, it's, it always seemed like when we, I was squatting, they were squatting. When I was benching, they were benching. It was that competition. Oh, yeah, like, I got to beat them, you know? Fuck these guys. You think they're the hardest shit in the gym? Fuck that, you know? <laughs> so, but but anyway. Too, <laughs> you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're family now. You know, it's weird crazy. because I was training a hidden strength. Yeah. I, was a, I was a hidden strength. That was my home gym, yeah, and, you know? Bit, yeah. Because I went over there to get coached by Jesus. But, you know... You know, I'm kind of grateful COVID happened because I wouldn't be in this position that I'm in now. So Definitely. when COVID happened, everybody got the home gym. So I got my home gym. And I remember those days. Yeah, I got my guy. Yeah, I just got I shit remember, in my house. I remember there was a video where uh, he, he's like, hey, bro, I almost died today. I'm like, what are you talking oh, about? Oh, hey, Claudio, that's still your fault, dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what was you were squatting, right? I was squatting, bro. But you know what? I was squatting on my payment. That like, was like this, bro. Yeah, <laughs> so, crazy. so I fucked up. Self sabotage right there. Uh, <laughs> so I came, I was squatting, I came down. And the fucking, I went like, oof, boom. But I was able to throw a 405. I was able to throw it off like that. Fight or flight. Yeah, but I fucking scraped the whole head. Wait, wait, wait. Whose weights were those? Yours? I heard people yeah. renting plates and shit. I was like, I almost pulled up an offer up though. I'm like, what's up, dog? You can't be charging me that much. But anyway, that's a different story. But. Claudio wasn't spotting me, so we always say, hey, that's Claudio's fault. He could have helped me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but but Claudio, Claudio was only like 5'4", bro, so he ain't going to do anything. Yeah. So, but... Why, why are you roasting my man like that? I love Claudio. Hey, Claudio, you know what my book is about. We roast each other all the time, bro. But, you know... Yeah. Back to nah, what you were saying, like, when you meet certain people, from afar, if you see, like, I would... I guess it's simple to say, if you see another alpha, like, I consider myself an alpha. Oh, I too. see you guys as an alpha. Because the way you conduct yourself. Right. So how you just said, when you see other, you're just like, man, fuck that motherfucker. Yeah. Fuck him. Bro. When, <laughs> when, so we had mutual people that, that, that knew that knew us, yeah, yeah. and they would always talk about this. When I said it in the episode with him, like, fuck, I thought you were a piece of shit. I'm like, damn, this was fucking high up there, <laughs> UCLA. I was like, fuck that motherfucker. Yeah, fucking lineman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't get a scholarship. I was like, man, that was full of shit. It's probably like big headed, probably looks down on everybody. But it's it's right. It was like maybe six, seven months before COVID happened, 
it was, it was right around it wasn't a full year but it was it was around right around those lines right. we ended up linking up we worked out at hidden strength one time from there we went all the way up up to 24 yeah, up we to went, covid we went down but we went down chips it's way for us oh my god you still got it Hey, episode tight. done. We're gone. Anyway, more of the story was oh, shit. how Papa just said earlier in the introduction. He, I, I was like, dude, you're a fucking big teddy bear, bro. Like, you're the most my, humblest dude. You're you know? my little big brother. And he was just like, bro, the way you conduct yourself right. is the way I like to conduct myself. The way he conducts himself. And now, literally, if anybody knows, this is like the first time we actually me and everything is you conduct yourself the same way bro right. and yeah. it's just like I'm not gonna go out there and get the respect it's just I already come with it like right. you better give it to me if not fucking keep going right. right because it's the way it goes you know what I'm saying like it it goes into the how we've been saying the people you have around you I support you and support you honestly support you and it it's like that I would say that meme saying like People that are really care for you won't ask for anything back. Right, right. And people will do it without expecting anything right. back. We don't count favors, man. But, you know, we don't. But, like, how Caesar said when we were on break, what would you say is, like, people are not going to support you when you're at your lowest and when you're a nobody. Yeah, we said so, it last time, bro. Like, I wasn't here last time, dog. So no, that's all I'm asking you. All right, yeah. bro. Wait, we were here last time, yeah. and that's when he said, look, yeah, you know who we need to get? Who need to get? Also, <laughs> here you are. So, and it's true because. No one's going to support you when you're nobody and when you only have a little bit of followers. But as soon as you make it, Everybody how you doing? How you doing? Like, hey, Everyone we're going to get a kick it. Me, and you know what's funny? As soon as, like, I started doing what I'm doing, people who were, were, took advantage of me, who I can say were assholes to me in high school, in my younger 20s. Yeah. Hey, also, when we going to get a lift in? Or we're going to do that. And I'm not an asshole. I, I, you know, I'm going to give them a chance. Just because you know? they need you now. They think you know? they need you. They they see something you have and they just want it. Yeah. They want it from you. And it's just like if I'm not saying I am, but say in high school I thought he was a piece of shit. And now I see him in all this like sports rehab and everything. Oh yeah. And then I come to him like, bro, help me out. Hook hook me up. Yeah. Right? That's the key phrase. Oh yeah, people want hook free me shit. Up. That happens all the time, bro. And it's just like, what do you mean, bro? Like you you didn't even talk to me. Like right. you we had our issues and you spoke to me a certain way and now again i depending on how people grow up yep. if they grew up out of high school they got to leave that high school realm and, and know, a lot of people don't geez. and i always believe that you know i appreciate caesar because i was going through so those times where he was helping me with the therapy i'm like hey dude i can't do it this month and he'll oh, help yeah, me facts, out facts. and you know and now i'm 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 going through a little financial situation and that's why I haven't been to him. Like, hey, dude, I'm not going to do that again to you. If I'm going to go to you, I'm going to pay you. Yeah. But one thing I always told myself, I'm never going to ask my close friends, my day ones, I'm never going to ask, hey, give me some free shit. Give me this. Exactly. If you truly love somebody and you support somebody, you're going to pay for this. You're going to pay for this shit and fucking support them. You just ask. Let me get one. I was just talking to my boy, Coase, who I used to work with. Um, Marcos. Marcos. Yeah, you know. Ooh, you know. Marcos, bro. Um, yeah, you know everybody. Probably. He said that he, he, he likes when I be posting people's stuff. Like, let's say you have merch or, you know, you have merch or Pogba's merch. And my boy, he sells these masks or whatever, right? Um, and I, or like, like my boy sells caps. Uh, his name's Pushy Weight. And then my boy sells masks, Drippy Trends. But like, I'll be like, um, shop them, right? And I put no discount code, buy full price. You know, because it's like, you know, everybody looking for a discount. Everybody looking for a way out. Yeah, bro. But then that shows game. those people with the mentality. Don't want to work for shit. Exactly. Don't want to work for shit. They don't have Harder. what it takes. Exactly. Harder. They want to find an easy way out. How the fuck? And that's why you see a lot of people give up on their dreams and goals because they don't understand that you're going to fail way more times than you're going to succeed. Well, that's everyone in that generation, bro. I've Everybody. noticed that our generation, no one wants to get their hands dirty. Nobody. Nobody. No one wants Nobody. To Nobody wants to, like, I... Bro, me? How, many, how many times y'all been asked for a travel scheme? Ooh. Hey, give me 500 bucks, bro. I'll give you a thousand. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. easy. Fifty bucks. Okay, yeah, two hundred. <laughs> yeah. Or flip the same motherfuckers who were still fake. Let's yeah. let's flip houses. <laughs> shit like that. Man. Shit like yeah. that, bro. Like don't like. I like what you just said. Flip houses. There's one dude I know, and it's because he's my agent. That he started at a real estate agency, and he broke off of it, and now on his own. Right. Him and his wife are doing it, bro. Him and his wife are just doing, and it's just like. 
It depends on who it is and how they conduct themselves. If you're a go getter, you're a go getter. Yeah. Right. If, I'm not saying I've I've had money because I didn't. There's times even when we moved out, bro, it was just like I paid everything. And it's like I got a hundred bucks. All right. Well, we we know we got to go to work and we got to do. So I got into like reselling like dash cams and this and that. Shout out to my boy Hector for for giving me that that light. After that, bro, luckily and blessfully, work came, and it's not just because it came. I had to go work. It it. I could give you the opportunity, but if you don't want to go get it, right. yeah, you just I missed it. I can you to the lake, but I can't make you drink the water. Ooh. Right? This is hey. this. This <laughs> how it goes, bro. Hey. Yeah, I can't force you to drink it. And, right. and, then, yeah. and that's going to go back to people want to be famous. Somebody wants to be somebody for the wrong reasons. Yeah. That's a fact. And there's, and, there's, and there's a quote that I read somewhere is, I want to be effective. I don't want to be famous. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Dang. And that's and that's that's like my main is like I want to I want to be effective, not famous. Yeah, fuck all that fame shit, bro. <laughs> well, yeah, it's only gonna well, it goes back to how I said. Think what you think, what you think of me. I know who I am and I know what I do, and I bring it to the table. They, I can't duplicate it. Right. I can't duplicate you. I can't duplicate you. I can't duplicate you. And that's another problem. People want to look up to somebody. I'm like, stop looking up to people and. You have a gift. A lot of people, a lot of us have a gift of our own. A lot of, you gotta find it. We have potential. A lot of people fucking nowadays. Oh, I want to be the next I mean, Michael Jordan. I, I want to be the next. I mean, I agree with what you're saying, bro. But sometimes people do need that spark. Oh, of course. No, you yeah. use them as motivators, yeah, yeah, of course. Exactly. But be your own be original. Your own, be, your own, be your own original. Be your own competition. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can't compare yourself to like you're gonna. People do different things differently from other people, right? Yeah. So it's like. Be right, your right. own person. Yeah. It, it's like saying, like, I know you look up to Nipsey and the way he moved around and not what he brought to the table and what he did for himself and the people around him. So I look at it the same way, Eric Thomas, and it, I don't look at what they had to go through and be like, fuck, I need to go through that in order to be you. Right. It's like, no, I'm going through my own stuff, but I want to be able to do similar what you did, but in my own way. Right. And built that name for myself because how we said earlier, and I always say it, our time frame, our book is already set. So my time frame from when I started, when we were born to when the day comes, which I hope it's till we 150. What did we do in between that? that that's going to, you know, we're going to be remembered for. Right. I, I've always said it. I do not want to be somebody in the floor and be like, oh, man, I was a good guy. That's it. That's it, and you and we really start. We really gotta start living like today's our last day, you know. God forbid, today's the last day we all get together. We don't know. Yeah, there's somebody right now, this moment that's not gonna wake up tomorrow. Sadly, and, that, and people don't, and people don't realize that. Yeah, and there's and like I uh, I don't know if you know Les. You guys know Les Brown. Les Brown, the motivational speaker. I, yes, 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 and yes. So let me ask you guys something. Yeah, and, I, and it, it resonated with me. I'm like, what's the richest place in the world? Dubai. Home. Huh? Home. The cemetery, Ooh. Oh, shit. because there's dreams, goals, and ideas that never that were never brought to light. Oh shit, that's true. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's a fact. Huh? And, be, I, and, and you know, I'm not like that's fucking true. And I'm not shit. gonna be that. That's why every day I wake up, I'm like, okay, what am I gonna do today to better myself yesterday? What am I gonna post today that's gonna help a, help save a life? So let's go back to the same effing question we did before, and we already talked about it, but. I, it's perfect is it who you have around you literally we're here now and i'm not gonna deny it bro because my girlfriend bought me the camera for for uh, christmas and we both did our research and be like all right this is the camera we need this is the program we, we need to just start off with but it wasn't because like she was the backbone and be like look this, i know you've been wanting it and you've been spending on like the house things and for us, but this is like this is it. And it came with that coming, it turned into all right, now I gotta find people. Being the first one, you being I believe it was like number ten, and now you're here. Yeah. The people I reached out to, and it was just like, Yeah, I'm down, I'm down. It's like Hell yeah, bro. Let's like do it. you know, I, I got nothing to offer yet, but when that day comes, let's go. And I was gonna say something earlier, but what we were saying about who supports you, be careful who you surround yourself with, because they're gonna ask the question, 
when you're going through your journey, they're going to ask themselves, what can you offer them? If you can't offer them anything, they're only there for the temporary time. So if you can't offer anybody something, which we shouldn't give a fuck because we're doing this for our own, you know? Yeah. But just be careful who you surround yourself with because there's fucking snakes out there. Like, I'm going to keep it 100. There's a bunch of fake-ass motherfuckers out there. There's motherfuckers talking shit behind our backs right now. <laughs> there's motherfuckers who are fucking commenting on my shit right now <laughs> that probably talked shit about me last week. I yeah. keep doing so. Yeah, keep doing so, you know? <laughs> we still conduct yeah. ourselves the same way, though, yeah. right? That And that goes back <laughs> to, like, how, how we got to this point. How did us men get to this point? We had a break. I know I had a break already. You just said you had a break, you know? And it, it gets to that point. When you break and you go to your lowest point, when you rebuild, you be like, I've, I've, I've been in my worst position already. Whatever you say, like, oh, I'm a piece of shit, cool. But that's how you feel. And I was a piece of shit. I was, you know, when I was an alcoholic. I knew I was an alcoholic, you know? And, you know, Ma, I just want to say sorry to my mother, you know? Um, she knew I was an alcoholic, but... And every time she would catch me drinking or it got to a point where he knew I was hiding my gallons of water. I would drink my water within an hour and fill that motherfucker up with either seltzers or tequila and Sprite. And I would drink that whole gallon throughout the day. And, but my mom knew. And Damn. every time she's like, you're drinking, I would lash out. You know, my, and mom, I apologize for all the times I lashed out. And I was a piece of shit. You know, I, I, I messaged girls. I said things I shouldn't have. And I'm admitting it. I'm not. I'm not gonna hide what I did. But I was a piece of shit, you know. And yeah. you know. But you know, a lot. And I also want to talk about my past. I don't regret it. If they, if they asked me, would you go through that shit again? Absolutely. Why? Because if none of that shit never happened to me, I would have been where I'm at right now. You gotta accept your past. You gotta accept for what it is. You gotta keep fucking going, you know, and just embrace anything that comes at you because life is life. You're always gonna get hit with fucking. There's gonna be left turns, right hooks. You left know, God hooks. forbid. I love my mother, and my parents, but when my mom dies, you know that's gonna be another thing. When one of my family members dies, you it's know? the worst. Homie. It's or, the worst. When I, and you know, God, and what if I have cancer? You know, shit's always gonna be happening, and people people are so scared to feel discomfort, that, and that's why people keep turning back to the bad habits right. because they don't. As soon as they feel a little discomfort. Oh, shit, no, what the fuck is this? I need something that's going to comfort me. Yeah. There were so many times in my room where I locked myself in the room and I was having anxiety attacks. I'm like, oh, shit, like, why the fuck? Like, no, nah, I'm going to go get a drink. And that's my alcohol call me. So the first three months I got sober, I was having withdrawals like crazy. Anxiety. I was pacing. I would wake up at like 2 in the morning pacing back and forth in my room. I think that's why I got addicted to caffeine because <laughs> I had to always drink something. And, you know, yeah. so I started drinking coffee. But if you're feeling discomfort, that's a good thing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And you keep, you're only gonna grow. Right. Out of it, yet yeah. what you just said right now, like the discomfort. God forbid anybody feels that, like the the portion of losing somebody, mm -hmm. which we all do at a certain point in our life, and I got and I hope to everybody it is way too old. Like I don't. There's never a time. But to get to that point, you know, how you, how you're, how we're all just saying, like, you get to that, that downfall. Like, I unfortunately had to go through two. One just recently, my grandpa, you know, rest in peace. Like, I kid you guys not. Like, this is raw and unedited. Like, I was just crying earlier. I cried the day before. I'm not used to it yet. I'm still not used to it. But it's because of the foundation that was built, that my grandpa built with all of our family. I can't duplicate that. I can only try to reciprocate that with my own family and what's yet to come. Right. And it's just how they say it. And my mom says it. My mom's like, the, my mom's a tough one. She's a tough one. And it's just like, let it go. Let it like, not let it go, but like, let it out. And she's not one of those to do it. But it's one of those that will deal with it when it comes. But I got to keep on moving because people count on me. But I'm, I'm okay to have, and I am at that position. I'm okay to have my moments. I'll cry. I'll shed my tears. I'll cry. I'll cry while driving. You know, when I recently I started posting like pictures of sky because my boy Caesar here started doing it. I was like, all right, well, I see you. I see why you're doing it. But I get to work right away and it's like, game on. Let's do it. Right, right, right. I'm okay to go back. Oh, yeah. But I know how to get back to, I know how to be like to my sane self. You know what I'm saying? But. 
you know, like you being the youngest one, you coming up after. I mean, we're not far in age, definitely not. Apparently, I'm the old man. He is oldest guy out here, Grandpa. Twenty nine, twenty nine. <laughs> but it, you know, like I think Paco, we've had conversations recently, and it's just there's certain things that we go through that we're all realizing now, and it's. Our, I would, we bring it back generation the older generation like our parents are a different way we're a different way and the ones coming up yeah. it's like we're doing this different <laughs> yeah like they're gonna be talking about us when they get to our or to our age it's like what we're doing now we're putting this you know I heard it before we're putting this free game out there yep. we're, we're not we're doing this for us because we we have this message and most people that do it be like, oh, shit, what am I getting out of this? Yeah. It's like, bro, changing lives. Right. That, yeah. if, if that isn't enough for you, what are you really doing? You know what uh, I'm saying? Do you guys remember that first Notorious movie that came out? Yeah. Remember that, the, what they always said? I never you can't watched change the world. Just change change yourself. Yourself. You, can't, you can't change the world unless you change yourself. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, true. And that, that, that's fucking true. And what, did, what was it to say? What did you say? I don't watch TV, dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'll follow. I'll follow up on that. Um, you knew somebody, right? right? So a long time ago, and it's crazy. It's been this long, but in 2008, which is now what, 13 years? 2008 or 14? Yeah, yeah, 13. 13 years. 13. 13 years ago, bro. I was what? I'm 24, so that was what? You were fourth grade, fifth grade? Yeah. 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 Hey, we're giving you teachers massages and shit. <laughs> hey, bro, bro. I was man, I was very, <laughs> I was very learning about what you know, how how to how to, you know like Look. how to uh, what's it called when you reproduce? You know? <laughs> <laughs> shit, I barely oh, so, knew so what's the deal with that. <laughs> he was, I was like, so anyway, bro. Long story short, bro, 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 that time I lost I lost my cousin, and you know this was someone who went through troubled times. Right, he grew up without the love of a family. Right, so what happens then when when young and especially diff, these are uh, different times. Now it's kind of way different, like you know. But back then, if if you didn't have love at home, you left and you found love in the streets or you found love somewhere else. Somewhere else, yeah. So he found love in the streets, right, which was the gang community. So he got love from them, right. So they welcomed him with open arms. Because again, he didn't get that at home. So you have to go search for that love. So long story short, you know, he did the whole gang thing. He was in and out of jail. And then at 18, 19, he got out. And, you know, he, uh, he was trying to change his life, right? Trying to change his world. How? By changing himself. Unfortunately, he was taken from us, you know, from his best friend. Oh, shit. Right? Got shot in the head, whatever. Yeah. Um, he passed away. Now, mind you, I'm what? 11. I'm 11 at the yeah. time. And I have a, another younger cousin, right? I won't say his name because, you know, shit we're going through. But there's always a story about motivation and inspiration. So we look at him, right? At least I look at, at my cousin who passed away. And I look at it as it motivated me to continue on what he couldn't do, right? Because I did have that love at home, right? So I did what he couldn't do. But my cousin, on the other hand, looked at it as inspiration, to do what he was still doing, right? So he thinks to this day is right to do that stuff, right? So it's always that motivation and inspiration. Yep. Yeah. So, and again, going back to when we lose someone, they serve a purpose, bro. Big they time. serve a purpose. So like with your grandfather, yeah. he passed away, bro. His purpose, everything he lived through and everything he taught you and your, and your younger siblings or your younger cousins or older cousins, whatever he taught you guys, bro, you guys look at it as motivation to continue on that with that. Right, so yeah. at the end of the day, bro, you're like I said earlier, bro. Um, you live forever, you know, when when you live a certain life, yeah. and like your grandpa, bro, the life that he lived you're and the person that the live. man that he was, because I, I imagine he was OG, OG type, yeah, that serves you and everybody else in your family as motivation to continue that on, yeah, you know, if you felt like he was a glue in your family, continue that, bro, apply everything that he was he stood for, yeah, you know. Cause he's gonna, he's living, he's living through you, he's living through everybody else in your family. And that uh, it, in, we're taking a, it, it keeps going back who you have around you. Yes. And it was literally my assistant coach, 
you mm-hmm. know, he's a Hispanic dude, very, very spiritual. And when we came back from the whole trip to, you know, put him to rest, I stopped posting again. I took my break for like a whole week. You know, I was like, I, I don't feel it. No. Nope. Waking up, I don't feel it. And he called me and said, hey, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, nope. somebody that wants to motivate people and inspire people does it day in, day out, and keeps the game. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't until I got that call and that check, how you said, like, your boys in the gym check you. Oh, yeah. He checked me in that way, and it was like, you're right. I'm blessed. Yeah. I got life. Yeah. I got a home. I got I got my lady. I got my son. I got my mom. I got my dad. I got everybody. We're still breathing. It's we crazy you say that, bro, because today, just today, I, I checked my cousin. I got on the phone with him. He's going through a situation. And I called, he called me, he was upset at something, and I called him right back. And I checked, I never checked somebody like the way I did. And also was there earlier, we, I was talking about it with my other cousin. I got scared, bro. I was about to dip. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so, you know, like, I had to do that because no one else has done that. You know, and I had to let him know, bro. You think, you think, you, like I said, my cousin served a purpose, right? Which was, unfortunately, the tragedy he went through, that was a purpose in our family. You know, and he and, and and my cousin looked at it. My younger cousin looked at it as inspiration. And then the day I checked, I said, "Bro, don't be inspired by it. Be motivated to not do that." You think our cousin? You think our cousin's looking down on us and is proud of the things that you're doing? You know, yeah. if anything, he would he would want you to do the opposite and not do that mm-hmm. and be like, "Take it from me." You know that I went through that and I lost my life to it. All right. Yeah. Damn, we're gonna take another small break because we're about, we're doing part two, about to go part three right we're now. Part three right here. I this think is... I do next part coming up. I do want to talk about a little sensitive subject that we're gonna get into. So oh, we're gonna get prepared. Stay, Stay fucking tuned. tuned. Don't... I got my water. <laughs> <laughs> He's falling asleep out here. Caffeine. Let's go. So <laughs> it's part three. We're going a little bit more than we expected. But it's some good stuff out here, guys. So we're gonna take it home with this last one. I think it's gonna be a little a little sensitive. For any of you guys, you know, I'm doing this for my followers mainly. A lot, I have a lot, a lot of people reaching out to me, especially men who are going through a lot of things and who are having trouble identifying themselves and who are going through or having suicidal thoughts. Um, I want to tell you guys this. It took me until... I just found who I am last year. It took me 20 years of life to fi- figure out who I really am and who I was. Are you comfortable? I am more than are comfortable. You, are you comfortable in your shoes? Like... You're the only one that wakes up and goes to sleep in your shoes. Absolutely. I love who I am. I love being chubby. I love my beard. I love being goofy. I mean, I love who I am, you know? Oh, yeah. I am who I am, cheers, you know? Cheers to that, bro. Cheers to that one. That's good. Know, if, like, I, like we said earlier, I mean, people are going to rock with me. People are not. And I clearly don't care who doesn't. But uh, this last sentiment that we're going to talk about, it's a little, it's a little personal to me. Um... It's kind of risky for me because especially the field I'm into, but I really want to do talk about suicide awareness and uh, men's mental health overall because when I was at the hospital October 14th, uh, my boy, our boy Isaac committed suicide and that hit home because he was always lifting with us. He was with us. No signs, no signs of what the fuck was going on. And we didn't find out, we didn't find out until maybe five days after. Because he wasn't going to the gym anymore. But what was weird is, leading up to that week, he had messaged all of us. Hey, when are you guys going to the gym? Like, well, can I go? But we were all busy. Yeah, we weren't going at the same time. So I'm like, it still affects me now. I know Ruben, he personally, I think Isaac texted him the mo- that day of he committed suicide. Wow. And Ruben didn't message him until After. Friday. Oh. But Isaac never texted back. Because, so... Hey. And that just shows he was probably reaching for help. And at that, and it hits me because I failed. I failed right. because I didn't. To me, I've attempted suicide twice, legitly. Uh, the first time I pulled the trigger, bullet didn't go off. That was November 2017. No, 2018. Um, the last one was last, last July. I have a studio uh, that I stay. The weekends I stay out there, I have a little studio. Uh, I was going to hang myself. I was just tired. I was done. You're enough. Uh, All you guys out there, you are more than enough. Don't let anybody belittle you. Don't let anybody make you feel like shit because you 
are enough. Whatever the fuck you're going through, divorce, financial, you lost your job, you're not alone. You have us. You are more than enough because you have such a soul. You have a beautiful soul in you that that needs healing. And, you know, we're here for you guys. All we can do is lend our hand out. Share our story. And like he was saying, if you're not going to be vulnerable, if you're not going to open yourself up, how can you begin to heal? Why do you do this? This is why, you know, uh, we're just literally on a little break we're talking about that. And this is why this... This podcast is here and it's not because we're getting famous and, you know, the only reason I would want to get that exposure is to reach those many souls that are yet to watch our stories. But the whole point of here is to be vulnerable. We said it with my boy Caesar. How do we get to that sanity part? It's to be vulnerable, to be vulnerable in your own shoes. Like, hey, this is what I had to go through, you know, piggyback of what you just said, man. And, and I think we're all blessed that you are here. Oh, yeah. to tell this story yeah. and to share it with us and you know I've barely got to know you but they've known you and um, just the, this last couple moments and you're a beautiful soul and if if you right now are struggling with that and how we said earlier maybe it's about changing the scenario or the scenery about who you're with because if they don't value who you are as a person with or without anything maybe you should change it up um, but after we just said, when I was going through my hardship, and this is now two years ago, uh, my uncle that was taken from us is buried up north. Um, I remember we were at my grandparents' house, and it was during the time where, like I said, I didn't know why I was crying. I didn't know why I was going through what I had to go through, like em- emotionally, mentally. I went to a cemetery, cried a little bit, you know. I said, all right, I'll see you soon. I'll see you bye. And I've always said that. But this is when I had like my 392 charger. And this is why when people ask me, like, do you miss it? Not really, because as quick as those cars are, and the it's it's one freeway in over there in the 805 up north and just hitting like your red line, like your top speed and you're about to hit an exit and you said, fuck the brakes. But my body just said, put the brake, put the brake, went to my grandparents house. And when I said bye to my grandparents coming back over here to LA, I was just saying bye and I'm crying and I'm just crying. They're like, what's wrong? I "I don't know. I don't know. And it wasn't recently again after COVID when my son's already here and I said it before and I said it at the beginning of uh, this whole channel, first episode, it took to have everything to feel like I had nothing. And it was a shower. We were showering our son, and it was just like I'm crying because I was like, dude, you saved me. I got something. I got something to look forward to. Because if I don't take care of myself, how can I, how we said, how can I take care of you? So, like, with that being said, like, what do you tell guys? Like, right now, specifically, the guys that are going through shit that just don't want to admit it because. Because they're machismo. They don't want to seem soft. It's okay to be soft. It's okay. You're not weak. You just need to be stronger. That's what it is. Everything's a step in life. If you don't like who you are, it's just a step. If you don't like where you're at, it's just a step. If you're going through something fucking terrible, a breakup, a lost family member, everything's just a fucking step. You cannot dictate where you are in life to who you who you are. You know, it's just a step. Don't wait. Uh, there's a quote: "Don't make a temporary decision over a permanent circumstance." Ooh. You know, everything is just a step. It's just a fucking another flip, page to flip. Yeah. Everything's just a step. So keep fucking fighting. Hang in there. You guys need to be strong. It's okay not to be okay. You know, you guys are all kings. We are all alphas. Be you. Smile. Be grateful that you're still alive. And reach out. You know, I'm going to tag my boys IGs. Um, if you don't feel comfortable talking to me, um, you know, we're all family here. Uh, you guys know at the gym, we're all family. Yeah, and you know, no judgment. No and, judgment. And how it goes, the only one that can judge judge you is the man above. After that, we're all imperfect. Right. You know, mm-hmm. nobody's perfect, and you gotta go through downfalls and high moments. And I heard it, and I heard it in a Mayweather. Uh, um, 
Showtime and his mom is saying it. If you don't go through the bad times, what do you know what the good times are? And it's, and once I heard that, and this was like three years ago, four years ago, and I was just like, yep. But I didn't see it that way. I said, man, these bad times, why is it me? Why is it me? But we're it's, here. And if you're going through hell, keep going. Uh, Winston Churchill said that. If you're going through hell, keep going. And if you're right there at the edge of the cliff and you're want to jump to the other side fucking jump take that leap how the fuck do you know what's on the other side if you never take that leap yeah there's gonna be a few times where you're gonna fall down but get your back ass up get your ass back on that trail get back on that cliff and keep fucking jumping until you get to the other side you're truly not gonna know what's on the other side until you fucking make that leap make that fucking leap and I always you gotta live by that take chances take risks that's all what life's about it's gonna hurt there's gonna be a lot of risk but that's where you find out who you are, what you are. You know, it's in there somewhere. You just got to yeah, believe in yourself it. and have faith. That's all it is. Have faith. But just prepare for the hardships. In order to be successful and to get where you want to be, it's going to hurt. You're going to take a lot of hits. A lot of hits. You're just going to keep your head up. You know, I don't like saying stay positive because I get it. It's hard to stay positive in certain situations. It's hard to keep your head up. And if that's the case, put your head down and fucking drive. You know, you got to do that. Yeah, drive through that way. Don't, don't, don't fucking walk with your head down. Drive. If you're going to keep your head down, fucking drive. That's my advice. What would you tell? The, young, the youngins watching, not even just the youngins, guys our age and older watching that feel like they got no chance. Yeah. I mean, really just going back to the whole vulnerability thing and just... Um, not being afraid to just show show who you really are, whether it's on a platform you have, whether it's to your friends and family. Um, the number one thing is um, never talk about someone else that's vulnerable to make yourself look better. You know, and that's the whole machismo thing you were talking about earlier. Right. It's like, oh, look at like, man, look at Cuz over there opening up and being all soft on camera, being all soft in front, in front of everybody else and being emotional and crying. And, you know, and then look at me, like, I'm tough. Like, nah. At the end of the day, uh, I'll for a real man, a real man will never put down another man to make himself look better. And that's just, that's just a fact, you know? Dang. Instead, he, they uplift one another, you know? And it's like, if I see you doing something, and, you know, maybe right now it's not, it's not the best, um, maybe it's not something that's gonna get you to where you wanna be right away, but you have passion, and, and you love what what it is that you do, do it, man. Go all in, you know? From from lifting weights to doing podcasts to, you know, motivating people, right. you know, do it, bro. And if you're passionate about it, do it. Uh, who, who was I talking to? Oh, you, bro. We were having breakfast. And then, um, I think he was just potentially saying, you know what, I want to take some time off from, from my job. And I, you know, and I don't mind taking that pay cut. Remember we were talking about that? It's kind of might be personal, but you feel me? Like, it, I told him, I said, look, bro, do it. If you feel like going full time with like coaching people and doing powerlifting or, or just motivating other people and wanting to do that full time, do it. You know, it's okay. It's okay to, it's okay to let go of the, let go of the gas pedal, you know, just to switch gears and then hit and then just and find your purpose. And find your purpose and then Ooh. just step on it. And to those naysayers, fuck you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, um, but he was going back. Yeah, you know, everybody has the ideal career job. You know, when we're growing up, hey, go be a policeman. Go be a lawyer. Go be that. I'm contemplating on leaving my job as a correction officer, being in law enforcement. And I hear, oh, but you got a pension. You got benefits. You got retirement. Fuck all that. You guys can have that shit. My happiness matters to me exactly. and what I want to do. God gave me this fucking second chance for a fucking purpose. Not right. to fucking take care of inmates all my fucking life. You know? Yeah. I got I got goals. I got ambitions. And I'm going to succeed. Yeah. So eventually I want to leave corrections and do my own thing. You know? I'm not. That's my purpose. And you know what, guys? Don't be afraid to fucking go after it. If, you, if you're unhappy on that job, fucking quit. Right. And if you're not happy in a relationship, fuck them. Move on. Move yeah, on. Boom, pop. <laughs> whatever you're going to do, people are going to hate on you regardless. Use that as fuel. Whatever, whether it's good or bad, they're going to hate on you. So why not do the things you fucking love to do? And whatever's going on wrong, relationships, whatever you're going through, it's God's way of telling you something better is on the way. Yeah, it's going to take some fucking time, but it's coming. Right. Look, it took me fucking 10 years in this relationship to fucking finally feel 
happy. I'm, I'm ready, and you know, I'm happy. I'm happy and proud to say I'm ready to be a good husband to someone. Yeah. I'm ready to be a good boyfriend. Yeah. A good father. I'm fucking ready. What did he just say? You can't change the world unless you change yourself. You got to. Oh, and then, you know, just, just and, stay strong. And for all my my heartbroken people out there, I got the broken heart on Ooh. my cat. Remember this. I always used to say. Well, I still say it to this day. You know, the relationships that I've had and I've been through. And, and I I would say, man, like I I even I told my mom one day, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? You know, like what am I doing wrong? Like why why why. Why do why do why do I not stay within these relationships? What's going on? Like this is a this is something that keeps recurring, happening, yeah. recurring, a recurring issue. And she told me simply like this. She said, "Don't look at it that way. Look at it. Maybe God is taking them away from you, yeah. right? Because He has something better." Yeah. And, and you know, just keep it one hundred here. You know, if you're with somebody for the wrong reasons, because the sex is good and they're beautiful, but you're you're not in love with them. Fucking leave that relationship. You're only fucking putting yourself in a hole and being a prisoner to your own fucking. Right. Why waste your time and their you're time? You're wasting time. That sex and that feeling is gonna. You could get it anywhere else, but be careful. That's also. It could be an addiction, a yeah. bad habit. But if you're not happy, move the fuck on. Like, oh, well, you don't understand my story. No. But you're I don't gonna need do to it on your own. You, you know what I'm exactly. saying? Like, I, I could tell you and how we're doing it here. I could. We could tell you where we're coming from. You take that information however you want. Use right. it however you want, you know. But I'm just telling you from where I came from, this is where I got, and this is why I'm here. I'm not here because I was just placed here. We, we're all here because we made it here. Right. We, we're in this marathon. We oh, made yeah. it here. We didn't. We ran yeah. a sprint. We fell down. We lost a sprint. And now we're, we're taking our time, and we're doing things right for ourselves. But... How you what you were just saying earlier about everybody else talking? I've heard it before, and I and I stay with it. People that talk are the ones that can't do it for themselves. Boom. Uh, you, you guys seen American Gangster, that Denzel Washington movie? Yes, sir. What is he saying at one scene? The weakest ones are the loudest ones in the room. That's a fact. That's facts. That's a fact. Yeah, that's true. That's facts. But something to take us home, Pot. Something to get us home. What it? I mean. In regards to, uh, you know, men in general and their feelings. Yeah. Mental health, bro. Emotional Shit, health. To be honest with you, I've really never been the one to open up about my feelings because, you know, that's just the way I was raised, you know. Like we said earlier, um, you know, it's always been, you know, keep that shit to yourself and just uh, keep, going. Yeah, keep going and keep moving forward. But honestly, as I grow older, I realize that, you know, sometimes I really got to put my pride aside. And uh, truthfully, I've never really opened up to anyone besides, you know, you guys and you know, really my girl and and a couple people from my, you know, my college, but honestly, I would say, uh, you know, reach out to your homies, you know, I try to do that, you know, every so often, you know, I don't reach out to you guys a lot, but you guys, we all put in the effort to reach out to each other, and that's all that matters, you know, yeah, yes, sir. and truthfully, you know, you don't know when, when someone's going through something, like, I could be going through something, but truthfully, I am going through some shit, but y'all know, you know, I'm yeah. not gonna have that shit behind the camera, you know, right. yeah, yeah, we don't, and, and I, and I appreciate y'all, you know, I appreciate you, you know, bro, like, I appreciate uh, you, man. You know, I put my pride aside and said, fuck it. Like, let me just open up, you know. Be a man, actually. Just fucking express myself, you know. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself, you know. Yeah. Nothing and, wrong um, with that, bro. You know, we're all, we're all here in the moment. Live in the moment. And, you know, at the end of the day, just keep living life with your homies. And, like I said, keep checking up on them as they, as they will check up on you. Yeah. I hope. Uh, That's all I got to we'll say. We'll end it there. And I hope ever, if you watch up to now, yeah. you take all these stories, all these personal stories and all these situations that one had to go through use them however you want use it as motivation or inspiration how Caesar said and uh, damn honestly as corny as it sounds I hope everybody smashes that like button yeah. the subscribe button because the more stories we get it out there the more people hopefully it will help and if it helped you smash that like button and comment yeah. your favorite part man but Facts. I appreciate everybody, man. Thank Likewise, you guys, bro. Thank you for having yeah. me. Before I go, I just want to let you guys know, sacrifice who you are for who you want to be. You owe you. So, we'll keep fighting. It. We'll take it there, man. Stay tuned for the next one. God bless.